Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and we have here the brand new 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro and the new Razer Blade Stealth 13. Both of these guys are very similar in specs and price, and we are going to break them down and compare these guys one to another and see which is the best fit for which situation. And honestly, these are two amazing machines, and I cannot wait to get into this more. And we're going to start off with first the Razer Blade Stealth, likely because a lot of you have seen the MacBook Pros already on this channel. We've already dove into them. And we looked at a few different PCs out there, but nothing like the Razer Blade Stealth. This thing is so cool. So starting off with the design of this thing, it is very boxy, it has a lot cleaner, straighter lines than the MacBook Pro, which is also made out of machined aluminum. But unlike this, this comes in this amazing black anodized finish. And in durability tests, you know, we didn't want to throw this thing off a bridge or anything, but this thing holds up well. The only thing really, really noticed on the outside was a lot of fingerprints catching on, but this exterior looks sleek and amazing. On the left hand side of the device, you're going to see a few different ports, and these can all get a little bit confusing, but the first is a USB-C 3.2 port, then a USB-A 3.1 port, and then of course, the headphone or the audio combo port. On the flip side, you're going to see a USB-A 3.1 port, as well as a Thunderbolt 3 port, which can also be used for charging. Honestly, I wish there was just one more Thunderbolt 3 port, maybe instead of that USB-C. Now again, the whole body here is metal, except for this back hinge, which is made out of black plastic, and it's kind of noticeable when you grab it from the back there. Now flipping this over, we're gonna see a few different things. First, there are these big silicone strips, which are great because it helps it stay in place very nicely, and the back one is raised up a little bit more, and you can see why. There are a lot of vents going on here. This thing can definitely run hot. There are these huge fans on either side of it, as well as all the vents along the back. And the biggest problem with this was when we had it sitting on our lap, it was far too easy to cover those ports up. This is an Ultrabook, it is light, it is sleek, it is portable, but man, it is really easy to cover those ports and for this thing to get real hot. The other thing, as we mentioned, was this thing is a fingerprint magnet. It is so easy for this just to, my hands are clean and I'm touching this and just immediately we're seeing oil and fingerprints already over it. It is easy to wipe off, but if you're kind of uh, paranoid or you really want to keep things clean, you're going to notice that very quickly with the razor blade stealth. This machine has no Touch ID like we see on the MacBook Pro, but it does have an infrared Windows Hello enabled camera. And honestly, it was really quick to unlock the machines when we used it, but we're not exactly how sure it is or how secure it is, but it was really convenient to have. And honestly, on a gaming machine, we were not that worried. Our display here is incredible. It is a 13.3 inch 4K 3840x2160 touch display that is individually factory calibrated and covered in Gorilla Glass, all powered by an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti graphics. The display itself looks phenomenal. I love the display here, it looks so good, but the touch display part, Honestly, it's still not for me. It just feels awkward. It still feels like my finger is too big to be touching Windows elements on here. That's not really a razor issue. It's more of just kind of a generic Windows issue of using kind of merging that touch technology into their laptops. It, it's still not for me, but I guess it is nice to have. Really, I almost never used it all. I, I even forgot it was there for a while. It still seems more accurate and faster just to use the amazing trackpad that's on here uh, that is very precise and made out of glass. One of the most eye-catching things of the Razer Blade Stealth 13 2020 model is the RGB Chroma keyboard. Again, this thing looks sleek and amazing. It's really eye-catching. You turn this on and the colors just start to come through. It looks very, very cool. And what's even more amazing is this can be built into games. There's actually an SDK out there where developers can integrate this into games and applications so the actual keyboard can react to what you're doing. It's just really cool and something you don't see over on the Mac side at all. Uh, it's a very responsive keyboard. It feels very nice. You can change the colors as much as you need to or just leave it on the default where it just kind of rotates through the colors on its own. One of our minor gripes with this machine uh, is with the display. All the bezels are very slim on the sides and on the top. It looks very sleek, but if you've noticed, the bezel along the bottom is massive. It is absolutely huge. And 
I mean, it's not its fault. It's, I mean, it's still a completely powerful 4K display here in such a small and light laptop. But once you kind of see it, it's almost hard to not notice how large that is sticking up from the bottom. As far as the one that we are checking out today, we are looking at the 1.3 gigahertz quad core i7 processor with 16 gigs of RAM. Of course, all of that brings us to our MacBook Pro. This is the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro that has a 2 gigahertz quad core i5 processor that's a 10th generation Intel chip, as well as 16 gigs of RAM. Now Apple's display is amazing as well, but it isn't quite as high resolution. Whereas the Razer was sporting a 3840 by 2160 4K display, this is a 2560 by 1600. It still looks fantastic and the color on it is vivid and amazing. Everyone is likely already familiar with the Mac experience as far as the build quality goes. These things are just top notch all around, entirely made out of that machined aluminum, the unibody design, all the ports, everything is just very sleek and simple and it looks great. There's a reason this design has been around for a number of years because people like it so much. One way that the 13 inch MacBook Pro is different is it has support for the touch bar. This is an actual OLED display here above the keyboard, it has a bunch of different functionality though, it's kind of going back and forth on whether people love it, hate it, or don't even notice that it's there. Personally, I'm a huge fan of it. When I don't have it around, it really starts to bug me that I don't have access to a lot of those quick functions that I'm used to. Now let's look at a more direct comparison between the two and then we'll look at performance. So here we have the Razer and we'll stack on top our 13 inch MacBook Pro. As you can see, they are nearly the same size. If we really get down to the nitty gritty, you can see there's a small overhang from the Razer that is just a couple millimeters larger than our 13 inch MacBook Pro, but it is so small, there's not really a difference. If you're looking at these two machines and being like, oh, I want the one that's smaller, uh, that's a pretty bad call as far as what you're trying to judge on when there's so many other differences between these two capable machines. Slide these things side by side, you can see that the Razer is also slightly taller than our MacBook Pro as well, but it definitely needs that space. I mean, you saw those fans on the bottom trying to push out a lot of air, and it has a lot of battery life in there, up to nine hours uh, under you know optimized use. So it definitely needs a little bit more height in there on the Razer side. If we take a gander once more at the ports, you can see there is a big difference, and that is the MacBook Pro is going with nothing but Thunderbolt 3 all around, two on each side. And honestly, I much, much, much prefer that. I hate mixing up the ports. I don't need the USB-A. I really just want to push things to Thunderbolt 3 and that USB form factor for everything. And I hate buying a new machine and having legacy ports still hanging around. That brings us to the keyboards. Apple did just update the keyboard on its MacBook Pro, getting rid of that butterfly switch design that was kind of problematic and replacing with a tried and true scissor switch mechanism. And we have been fans. We have been typing on the new MacBook Pro consistently for ages now, and we absolutely love it. We love the keyboard, we love touch bar, and we love touch ID being able to get into a machine. It's so secure. If we compare this directly with our Razer, they're very similar. Neither of these keyboards are bad by any measure, but they're definitely different. There's a little bit of a, there's less pressure needed and there's a lighter tone to the clicking noise when you're pressing on the MacBook Pro versus the Razer. The Razer feels darker, deeper, and requires a little bit more pressure to actually move those keys down. But otherwise they have about the same amount of key movement and they are both very solid to type on. Of course, Apple lacks that RGB chroma back color that we see on the Razer. But again, both these are amazing keyboards. We prefer typing for fast, normal stuff on our MacBook Pro, but maybe if you're just gaming or something, the Razer would be just as good, uh, even better because of that extra weight on those keycaps. Now let's go ahead and look at performance, which is a little bit of kind of a weighted thing. It's really hard to compare, you know, Windows to Mac OS. And really, what are we being told from this comparison anyway, from our results? But if we do look at them, uh, the Razer wins out on the single core with a 1292 versus 1162, and the Mac wins out on the multi-core, getting that 4344 versus a 3391. So huge improvements on the multi-core on the Mac versus the multi-core on the Razer. We started to go down the route of doing more benchmarking. We started looking at Cinebench and everything like that. And we realized that it, it really doesn't matter. No one is picking up necessarily the Razer to do video editing on. A lot of people that are going to be picking up the Razer are going to be picking it up 
for gaming. And honestly, there is no way that the Mac can compete with the Razer when it comes to gaming. Between the keyboard and just everything, there's even gaming mode built into the machine that is built exactly for gaming. It has a higher resolution display, and we played uh, Overwatch and Fortnite, and we could just ramp up that uh, the frame rate, and it was just incredible to play on, and it's going to ever really be hard to beat that on a Mac, not just because of the hardware or how they're built, but because there's not as many games on the Mac to play. We definitely played Fortnite and everything, and it played smoothly and great, and it was, it was fantastic, but there's so many more games available on the Razer. The Razer is a machine that is built for games. We still aren't huge fans of Windows, and there's some things we trade off on. I wish there was more Thunderbolt 3 ports, and I still just prefer the feel of Mac OS to Windows, but the Razer is an outstanding machine. If I was looking for a portable gaming machine, honestly, I would lean towards the Razer than the MacBook Pro, but if I'm looking for something that's more balanced, even with the less games, I'd have to lean towards the Mac. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of the new Razer Blade Stealth 13 or the new MacBook Pro? Let me know down below in the comments and reach out to me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you want to grab either of these guys, we have exclusive discounts down below in the description. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.